So what exactly is Quan syndrome? So it's, it's basically <coughs> one of the rare paraneoplastic neurological syndrome which involves the multi system. So with an, as the names comprises, that includes polyneuropathy, organomegaly, and endocrinopathy, monoclonal gammopathy, and skin changes. So because it's presentation, a clinical features, some biochemical features, neurophysiological features have got some kind of common features with the CIDP in clinical practice, 60% of the patients are misdiagnosed with the CIDP and there is kind of uh, having the inappropriate treatment and delaying the, uh, in terms of managing the definitive treatment. So we can come across, as a neurologist, we can come across a, these kind of patients in the clinical practice. 50% of the patients usually present with the uh, neuropathic features only. Um, even though, you know, like they are sharing some kind of common clinical features as CIDP, most of the time, 65% of the patients who have got points neuropathy uh, usually has got uh, very painful neuropathic features. Six, according to the study, 65% of the patients have got pains associated, associated with a neuropathy. And most of the time, it's uh, lens bandit sensory motor neuropathy, which mainly affecting the distal part of the limbs rather than involving the proximal muscle. Sometimes CIDB can involve either distal or proximal a, a features as well. And if we can give some careful attention that is associated with some extra neurological features, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide. Uh, in terms of biochemical, it's more or less the same as CIDP, CSF uh, protein can be raised, so it can be quite difficult in terms of differentiating with the CIDP. A neurophysiological study is usually shows mixed demyelinating external features, but unlike CIDB, which is more predominant a demyelinating pattern in current neuropathy is usually associated with the exonal degenerations. And there is fewer condition block when comparing with the, um, the CIDP. So when are we going to suspect corns? So most of the time people uh, are being treated with the IV or either flags. But then if the symptoms are not improving, then at that point, we might probably need to suspect uh, there could be the Quan's uh, neuropathy. <coughs> so this is the diagnostic criteria for Quan syndrome. So there are mandatory criteria, major criteria and minor criteria as well. So for the mandatory criteria, uh, two criteria needs to be fulfilled to make the diagnosis. Uh, there could be the neuropathy and there should be the endocrine <coughs> uh, plasma cell proliferative condition, most likely plasma cytoma. Most of the time, uh, there is the increased IgA gammopathy, 52%, 47% is mostly related with IgG. There is very rare associ association with the IgM. Uh, and then 95% of the patient has got positive lambda light chain protein. So as a major criteria, out of three criteria, at least one criteria needs to be fulfilled. Uh, one is Kassaman disease, which is Again, rare hematological conditions causing enlargement of the lymph nodes and the or other criteria would be sclerotic bony lesions, but unlike multiple myeloma, which can be sometimes associated with the painful bone pains or either associated with the pathological fracture, most of the point syndrome uh, doesn't have any bone pains. And there is the increase a vegetative level, which is thought to be involved in the pathogenesis of the point syndrome. So minor criteria could be associated with organomegaly, endocrinopathy, mainly hypopituitarism, hypogonadism. Sometimes there could be involvement of uh, diabetes or a thyroid dysfunction. Could be associated with skin changes, hyperpigmentation, sclerodermite changes. There could be skin changes as well. And most of the time people can present with some uh, hemangioma, which is basically small papules, especially in the chest as well. Could be associated with extravascular volume overload. People can present with pleural effusions or ascites. Could be related with two papilledemas, and there is the increased risk of thrombocytosis, polycythemia, which uh, sometimes can patients present with strokes or myocardial infarction. So it's more or less the same as you know, like CIDP, and when people are presenting with neuropathy, we usually do normal peripheral neuropathy screening. But if we are suspecting for the Quan syndrome, there are a few investigations that we might probably want to check. So the main investigation that we need to check is the VEGF, which is vascular endothelial growth factor, which is thought to be associated with overprotection of the products a, from the plasma cells. So they have got the different mechanisms of actions 
increase pro uh, increase angiogenesis, they increase vascular permeability, causing a increased extravascular volume. They have got potential for the proglobulin activity, causing thrombosis everywhere. They have got potential for osteoblastic activity as well. So all of the previous a uh, disease manifestations are thought to be contributed by overproduction of VEGF in in the Cohen syndrome. Other additional investigations, if there's any clinical relevance, we can check for the <coughs> hormone level, but normally we always check the serum electrophoresis if we are suspecting for the peripheral neuropathy as part of the workup. In addition, we can also do the skeletal survey to see if there's any evidence of skeletal lesions in the bones, or if we are suspecting, we can refer to a hematology for the bone marrow biopsy. Uh, so once we are making the diagnosis of Cohen syndrome, there are some four prognostic factors. If there's any delayed diagnosis, delayed treatment, which is understandably associated with poor outcome, or if the patient has got some cardiopulmonary involvement, like pulmonary hypertension or so volume overload, could be the uh, associated with the uh, poor survival and the poor outcomes. So management-wise, a obviously definitive management would be referring to the hematology from the neurology point of view. They can give some radiotherapy, chemotherapy, or if it's not improving, to do the can do the bone marrow transplant. From the neurology point of view, just analgesia for the neuropathic pain, physios, otave treatment, a orthotics, and if there's any evidence of respiratory involvement, can do uh, can give the NIV as well.